Hello, my beautiful Tauruses. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. I am just shuffling up right now, getting ready to do your January 2020 tarot readings. Yes. Happy New Year's, beautiful people. You made it to 2020. Now get ready because the real show is about to begin. <laughs> and I ain't talking about this reading. I'm talking about this year, okay? <laughs> Anyways, um, for those that are new, welcome. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It's much appreciated. For those that are returning, thank you for all your likes, shares, subscribes, and positively engaging the channel the way you do. Um, for those that joined the Patreon, thank you so much, guys. I'm very excited about that platform and, and connecting with you guys on a more regular basis. Um, so if you are interested in additional content to the monthlies, you can check out the Patreon for daily and weekly readings. Just keep in mind it's for members only high vibed, okay? Very high vibed. You come there with any kind of negative vibes, energy, I will block and refund you immediately. I don't play, and it's not just with me. I see you attack anybody else on that shit. It's a hot fucking delete and a refund, all right? And you better hope I don't cuss you down too. Yeah. Keeping that real safe over there. Anyway, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using um, Cynthia Harrison's deck which is this one here, The Honest Truth, second edition. She's got a YouTube called Shrubs Thunder. So I'll link, I'll put the links below for all of that because um, I am going to be doing that. I need to be due diligent and putting the links for the reader, uh, the, the decks that I use. And then I'm going to include Eugene Vaninsky's website, Tarot Mania, where you can get all of his decks, okay? Because I've got his entire collection. Well, I think 90% of it, there's a couple decks I still need to go get. He did a Death Oracle deck, which is so cool. I want it. I want it. Eugene! <laughs> Anyways. Um, and then we'll use the Lenormand and I'm using the fairy godmother to also clarify and then we'll pull an oracle. But I am going to start the reading um, with the uh, Chateau Avenarese tarot because we're going to pull a card just to see what the overarching energy is for the entire reading. Okay, and it's only major arcana in that deck. So that'll be dope. All right. All right. Let's go into prayer and get into your spread. My beautiful Tauruses. Happy New Year's, guys. I love you guys. All right. 90,000 subscribers. What? Can't believe it, man. Can't believe it. I love you guys, all right? Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning, and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now in particular, thank you for connecting me with the collective sign of Taurus. Please allow me to communicate clearly to them the messages that are in their greatest good, surrounding their material abundance, sustenance, their relationships closest to them, their personal ascension and development, and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for everything you do for me and the collective. All the healing energy, the support, the love, the guidance, and the protection. We are nothing without it, and we are nothing without you. So thank you, Father God, and amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father forever and ever. Should I say glory be to the most high? A lot of you guys, I refer to God as father, but that's just because of how I was raised. <laughs> you know, God is prime source and the almighty. It's everything is everything. God is anything that is alive. Anything that supports life and is alive is of God. Anyway. Wow. Overall energy is the lovers. All right, Taurus. Let's see, Wagwan. This could speak of union of the masculine and feminine energies inside of you. Some of you are getting actually legally married. Um, others of you are making decisions surrounding love and then backing up those decisions because you understand that your choice is divinely guided. And it's not just so much the choice, it's the path of which you're going to embark on. Because if you see, there's almost like this path, it's a fork in the road. So essentially, when they come together, they're going to embark on this path together where they were just once alone. Okay, so this is definitely union energy as well, but it's the decision to go into union. It's not just happening to these people. As you can see, there's a discussion here. Okay, it's being divinely guided. It's a choice to embark on a path with someone. This could be in regards to partnership two people who have built something independently, who have educated and worked, honed in on their skills independently coming together to work on something 
as one, build something together. So this could be with regards to business. Some of you started a little business and are actually going to join with somebody who also has a little business to create something a lot bigger that I don't think either of you two could have imagined, but you guys have an idea of it because it's being downloaded to both of you, not just one of you. So there's that, that familiarity, that understanding that, okay, we are meant to go on this path together. For some of you, it is romance. Okay. So that's really, really beautiful. I really, really like that. I like her dress. <laughs> I like her dress. Okay. All right. Let's get into the main spreads. The lovers, eh? The lovers, eh? Gemini energy, eh? Some of you guys, um, the last full moon in Gemini created a lot of like indecision. Um, that moon was putting a lot of pressure on people to not make head or heart decisions, but to understand the concept that decisions need to be made with both. So for some of you, you were a bit anxious going into that, balancing yourself internally, which I think is why you're now at a stage where these decisions can be made now, because you yourself have balanced out your feminine masculine energies Okay, you have you yourself have balanced out your head and your heart and feel very clear about not so much this person per se, but more this path that you're being divinely guided to go down. So what I think this discussion is, is, is this person divinely guided to go down the same path as me should they come? All right. All right, we're going to do a nine card spread. Let's break down this lovers, guys. Let's break down this energy. Three of wands. Yeah, this, these are discussions surrounding exploring this new path with someone. When some of you might have been cultivating and made plans to embark on this path alone, independently, right? Which is great. Because that independent pursuit got you to this fork in this road, brought you to this person, essentially. Now that you are at this crossroads with somebody, whether this is an existing person or somebody new, this is a decision to, should we embark in this path together? The lighting's a bit there. Should we embark in this path together? Should we continue? Some of you in pre-existing relationships are at a crossroads within your relationship and might be going to counseling or getting the support of an elder or somebody to kind of discuss. I, I'm getting the impression that for those that are in existing relationships, you might have somebody, a third party person trying to keep you two together. And it's a decision on whether or not that should be explored. Okay, where for others of you, you might just have met this person while you were trotting on your path alone and are now at a fork in a road determining whether or not you want to, like I said, explore this new path with this person. Keep getting cards, six of swords, travel, yeah. For some of you, it's making a decision to make something official, but what would make it official is the agreement to do something could be move in together, travel together, visit family together. Some of you are are um, considering introducing somebody to your family, um, but didn't want to do that until you had a very firm decision on what you wanted to do with this person. Some of you regretted um, introducing people to your family before knowing if you really wanted to be with them because then they were too much involved. It's almost like somebody doesn't want family or friends involved in the decision-making process. They want to include friends and family once the decision process has been made. Because then it's almost like, I don't care what people say about what I've already done. I just don't want anybody trying to impact what I'm about to do, is what I'm hearing. I was just about to split the deck too, but we got another card that flipped out. But I can't see, oh, there it is. It's the Hermit. Yeah, some of you, you've been embarking on this path dolo. I feel like it might be here. 
Yeah. Some of you have been embarking on this journey alone and are making a decision to no longer walk your path alone anymore. Right? And it was funny, a lot of you begged to come out of this hermit mode, begged for this moment in time only for you to come here and be a lot more hesitant than you thought, which is good. This is a, not a light decision. It shouldn't be like, oh yes, okay, come, thank God, oh my God. No, <laughs> this should be like, even just taking your hood off should be, you know, there's a lot of weight here. This decision has a lot of weight. For those in pre-existing relationships, this energy is the need to pull back in order to come to the decision about wanting to embark in, like I said, for some of you in existing relationships, you have third party energy trying to, I don't want to say manipulate, but encourage a decision, encourage an outcome with regards to these people who are already in a relationship. There's somebody, though, that is wanting to pull back in order to make this decision alone. So I'm getting that there's somebody here who does not want this third party energy involved in these negotiations. Doesn't want this third party's influence or um, perspective. It's almost like I'm pulling back in order to make this decision about this path and this person alone instead of with the support of whoever this is. It could be an elder, it could be a parent, um, it could be your religion and faith, okay? Getting you to stay together with somebody that you don't want to and you're feeling very alone because you're not getting the support of your community, your, you know, your, your community about leaving a relationship or a marriage. I'm more getting it like a marriage. Feeling very alone in this but really looking from within to determine because I'm getting the impression that regardless of the lack of support, there are people in this collective that don't really give a shit and are going to do what they want to do because they've looked within and have found answers about their path and where they're supposed to go and who with. And I just want a clean shuffle. There it is. All right, your overall energy to break off from the lovers is the seven of wands. This is about courage, effort, and challenges. Some of you are at a crossroads within a relationship and discussing whether or not you want to stay together to overcome the challenges. If the efforts that could be made would be would reap success in some kind. This this is the seven of wands standing your ground with regards to your boundaries, what it is you're not having in the relationship, what it is that you want within the relationship, and then bringing that to a discussion to determine whether or not this path can be moved forward. Like you can move forward in this path with everything that was discussed. There, for some of you, you've come through some very harsh truths. There were things discussed. There was a lot that came out this year with regards to your relationship. And this is needing to stand your ground surrounding what is best because this angel could be separating them or bringing them together. It really depends on who's watching. Okay, but it is a decision that's gonna require the head and the heart to decide what's best. Some of you need to be really careful because with that hermit energy, a lot. some of you have been alone for a while and you need to be really careful surrounding your defensiveness because there, like I told you guys, there is um, a difference between being creating boundaries and then isolating yourself in those boundaries. Okay, so keeping yourself alone creating walls so high that yes, they protect you, but they also protect you from good things. Like, you know, um, some of you are like, if you look, it looks almost like he shot down all these guys, but they're all dressed like him. So it's like, it wasn't the op. These like, you know what I'm saying? So be mindful. You know, there's a need for you to kind of, when I see shoot down, it's almost like I, sh I, sh I shot you down, meaning no, 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 no. I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. <clears throat> Some of you are need to come out of the energy 
this this energy, this uh, warrior energy, because you were in this energy coming out of a very tough karmic cycle. You cannot go into your new karmic cycle with this energy. It's going to isolate you. You need to know that you can now suit down. You had to suit up for what it was that you purged yourself from, disconnected from, attacked, wrapped up. There's a need to disrobe now and put on normal clothes. <laughs> okay? Put the gun away. <laughs> put the gun down. <laughs> some of you are just like, you know, but some of these people are new people. Like they don't, they're not the ops. They are wearing the same suit as you. Um, yeah, so needing to just be careful about rejecting um, some of the new people that you've manifested in your life because you're still a bit PTSD from the old cycle you've just um, fought your way through. Because for some of you, your old cycle was an absolute fight, meaning there was conflict and fighting and harsh truths communicated up until the end. So that's why you guys are still suited up because some of you don't realize you are at the end and that you can put the gun away because you don't want to shoot someone who is not armed. You do not want to shoot someone down who has not hurt you or who does not have the intention of hurting you. Because it's going to be very hard for you to go to that person after you shot them down and say, hey, and explain yourself. Because think about if it was an actual gun and you shot someone by accident. Okay, then just shooting a truth at somebody or shooting someone down saying, no, I don't want you. And then coming back to have that discussion, imagine you actually shot them. It's going to be a lot harder for you to go and apologize and say, oh, I'm sorry, when this person is wounded and is needing to heal. Okay, so just be mindful. Be mindful, guys. Be careful. Five of swords. Yeah, be very, very mindful about how you're speaking to people, how you're engaging with people. Some of you are um, very defensive and are coming off very conflict driven. So you are are um, very easy to be triggered. Some of you will argue, get into arguing conflict really quickly. Okay. And it's, and it's in, in all fairness to you, I feel like it's because of what you just came from. The problem is, are some of the people that you're embarking in this new path are not functioning this way. They've had enough time to heal from their past karmic cycles they are not vibrating low enough to want to entertain conflict unless it's absolutely necessary and will bring some kind of positive resolve, right? So there's certain people that I feel, Taurus, you need to be mindful about not shooting down or pushing away or not creating conflicts with, okay? Some of you are going to feel con conflicted about apologizing for shutting somebody down and explaining to them the kind of energy that you were in and why you did it. Because some of you are torn in your mind about the way you address somebody. A part of you feels guilty about how you spoke to somebody, addressed with somebody, or the kind of conflict you created with somebody. And then there's another part of yourself, your shadow self, that is saying that it was warranted. Okay? But really what you need to do is listen to the shadow saying it was hurt by what was done, or that it's feeling triggered. Okay? And not allow the shadow to behave or lash out. Just acknowledge that you are feeling triggered in some kind of way. Okay? to avoid creating conflict in order to get somebody to feel what it is you're feeling that you don't know how to communicate. I don't know where that came from. Anyway, justice, number 11. Somebody might be mediating. This could be a mediation because there's this person's mediating these two people. So this could be um, court. Some of you might be in legal situations with partners or past partners. Some of you feel like the legal battle, the conflict with regards to a legal battle is almost unbearable. Some of you are really struggling with how low something's going. Let's keep going though. Eight of Cups. Some of you went through the legal process of getting divorced and are now feeling conflicted that you're actually going to have to walk away. There, there is a couple who has been pursuing um, a separation or a divorce of some kind. And this is either one of two things, somebody changing their mind or realizing that maybe they're not as 
And that's fucked up because money's already spent. This has already been in front of a judge or in a courtroom somehow. Um, where for others, uh, certain others are, some of you are being manipulated into staying into a relationship because of an injustice that somebody is telling you you've caused. So it's almost like if you walk away, you're causing even more injustice. Or if you walk away, you're you're doing something bad to me. There's this um, a bit of manipulation with regards to somebody walking away from a relationship. This is also somebody taking the high road, understanding that this conflict, there is no out. It does nothing but trap. So some of you were trying to communicate with somebody and it didn't bring the resolution that you wanted. So the only way to create justice in a situation was to walk away from it. And it's funny because some of you are taking that approach to bringing in justice by removing yourself from the conflict. And this person is feeling like you doing that is even more of an injustice. So I'm seeing like a pull and pull, a push and pull between a relationship that is coming to an end. It's just that these people, nobody's happy with the way it's going down. It's not an amicable ending. Page of Wands, Four of Cups. Somebody, some of you have your partner telling you that you're going to miss an opportunity with them if you leave them. So I'm hearing like some of you saying like some, somebody saying to you or you saying to somebody like, listen, like I can get snatched. I can get picked up. Like you're not the only one who wants me. I have somebody did it. It's somebody like trying to convince somebody that they shouldn't walk away because they'll be missing out an opportunity with them, which is funny because... I feel like the person's walking away because the opportunity of which they seeked was not there. <laughs> so somebody's not responding well to the demise of a relationship because somebody's trying to do it in a balanced way and the other person is using conflict because this person who is, who is using conflict in this ending doesn't have the intellect to understand why somebody is going about this ending the way they are. They are trying <laughs> to do this in a good way. Somebody is trying to leave a relationship in the best and most lawfully way possible. But the, uh, the way this person, the other person's handling it, there's no way. The only way you can bring justice with somebody like this that you're trying to leave is by walking the fuck out. They don't have the intellect to bring this relationship to an ending in any other logical way. They just don't know. Part of this experience with them, with you, or vice versa, is going to teach them. Next card out, the Knight of Pentacles. Somebody's moving on. Somebody's not going to miss an opportunity by sticking around in conflict and in low vibrational fighting. Some of you are fighting in the workplace and pulling away from work socializing because of how it negatively impacts your standing within the workplace. So some of you are completely ignoring um, work friends. You're pulling back your hermit mode in the workplace. Okay, so just be very careful, though, about being hermit mode in the workplace because essentially there are people you're gonna have to work with and interact with. It's just part of the way the, the department, the, the company functions. And you need to understand that if you're trying to pull away from relationships, that's great, but don't pull away from everyone. Okay, because there's certain people who are allies in the workplace who can support you, who are not into the low vibrational gossipy bullshit that would actually respect the decisions that you've made to pull back from certain people who are toxic in the workplace. Because some of you had um, social um, connections with some toxic people, which essentially you're pulling back from. But I'm getting that you need to be careful from pulling back from everyone because it actually might make it seem that you're not somebody who can be worked with or is being a team player when that's not really the case. You're trying to pull back from toxic dynamics in the workplace so that you can be most efficient at your job and not be caught up in the semantics or the drama. Next card out, the Seven of Swords, the semantics or the drama. Running away from the drama, some of you are absolutely, some of you are actually communicating to a boss that you can no longer work in a, in a certain dynamic. And I think this is an off the record conversation. I don't think it's formally you going to a boss and complaining. I think a boss might have pulled you to a side or somebody, it's, it's an off the record conversation about some of Somebody might have come to you and said, oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, you've been really quiet or something like that. And some of you might have 
you know, an off the cuff conversation and off the record conversation about why. And it's because of this conflict, this competition, you know, these injustices, you know, this, this kind of, you're not, you're, you're feeling like you're, you're explaining to somebody that you're feeling like you need to pull back from certain relationships because it's negatively affecting the way you're being viewed in the workplace, or it's negatively affecting your productivity in some way. It's almost like, or for some of you, this could have been um, a kind of, some of you are feeling defeated because there was an injustice that occurred in the workplace. And all you want to do is move forward. And you might be venting to somebody, um, a boss or somebody who, and I think this person comes to you and asks you what's wrong. And I think you do express, um, and I think you get some positive advice about how to move forward with the Nine of Pentacles here. But I do think that boss might actually say something on your behalf. Because what I think that boss isn't going to tell you is that they already know about these toxic dynamics. Next card out, the magician. For some of you, you made a relationship with somebody in the workplace that you thought would help you succession. And you realize that they are the toxic person in the workplace and that you didn't need them to gain any opportunity. Because the opportunity that you thought this person in the workplace would help you with is one that you end up manifesting on your own by actually removing yourself and pulling away from that energy. I tell you guys, do not seek greatness or opportunity in other people. It's not that people don't offer you things or support and things, but it's like you with that, it's like somebody walked in looking at that person saying they can help me, they can succession me, they can get me an opportunity. And they ended up being the low vibrational fucking manager or the toxic tie or whatever the case is realizing that, okay, I'm going to have to manifest this without that person's support because essentially I need to pull away from them. They've made it clear that they're not supporting me in, in the way I thought, only for you to actually get that manifestation. So some of you actually have a conversation with somebody. That, 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 it's funny how this plays out. I'm getting it like there was somebody you thought you needed to get something and then you realize that you got it on your own. You got it on your own. The Ten of Pentacles, wow. Success. You got success on your own. Some of you had a really tough year with regards to career. And I think it was because the people who you looked up to, who influenced you, who supported you, direct report, direct managers, things like that, you got to see them for who they truly are. You realize that there were certain leaders that didn't actually have leadership qualities. Yes, they might have had more experience or had done more in the field, but they lacked actual leadership abilities. And that was difficult for some of you because of how I think some of you conflicted ensue with that person. Maybe that manager, maybe that individual got a bit threatened by you. Okay, um, either way, there was a shift. That, 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 that conflict you experienced in the workplace got you to see yourself differently, got you to seek opportunity instead of waiting for it to be handed to you by people who would be jealous, <laughs> you know, it's like a realization, a really tough realization in the workplace has occurred, but it's absolutely beautiful because essentially the realization brings about the manifestation of the 10 of Pentacles, the success, the status, the stability, the opportunity. Some of you are communicating to a mother or father. Some of you are in a family dynamic, okay, have a sibling who causes a lot of problems. And some of you realize your parents enable this sibling or this family member to cause a fucking muck. And some of you are communicating the harsh truths about what this person has done and are saying to said parents, I am not dealing with this anymore. I am not enabling this anymore. You want to help this person go ahead, but I am not anymore. So some of you are removing yourself from some familial conflict. Okay. Um, and I think it's out of the sheer fact that there's nothing you can do. It's like, I think some of you have tried to help somebody and you're realizing that that goes in vain, trying to bring balance and justice and it goes in vain. Because this, somebody keeps creating injustices that you try to keep fixing, Taurus. And you're realizing, I need to walk away because I cannot create justice for somebody else. 
somebody refuses to tell the truth about something. Like for some of you, you, you spoke the truth and somebody is refusing to admit it. And, you, and I'm getting Taurus saying, well, then fuck it. I'm out of here. Like, if you're not going to tell the truth, if you're not going to admit A, B, and C, I'm fucking out of here. That's what I see Taurus saying to somebody. Like, don't play with me. If you're really going to lie, you're really not going to tell the truth. Well, then I'm out. Yeah. And then I'm out. Two of wands. Some of you are saying that to a partner. Some of you are saying, I've invested long enough. Okay. Invested long enough. Ooh. I love that emperor card in this deck. Ooh. Ooh, yummy. Oh, some of you are like, I want to see the emperor card. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, -ee. Shit. Looking like a whole snack. All right. Okay, let's um, clarify with the Lenormand. And then we'll clarify with the Godmother Oracle, my beautiful Tauruses. Some, I heard sold me a dream. Some of you, oh shit. Some of you feel an injustice occurred because you rejected an opportunity in order to take on this. Somebody sold you a dream. And they sold you a dream because they knew they were competing with something else you were considering. Could have been money investment, relationship, anything. Somebody really ramped up and sold you a dream. And some of you are realizing you missed an opportunity to pursue this dream that was sold to you. And are very upset about that. Very, very, very upset about that. Because in the middle of the spread is this missed opportunity. So somebody or, some of you are feeling an injustice occurred because you missed an opportunity to bring in a manifestation because you believed in somebody else's dream. You believed in somebody else. Okay? Somebody sold Taurus a dream. You bought it. And now you're realizing you bought it. It was, it was overpriced. And it actually got you to miss another opportunity of some kind. Some of you were sold a dream about moving, doing something. Don't take this opportunity. We'll go here. We're going to, there's way more opportunity. If we go here, don't take that. We're going to move and go here. And essentially they sold you a dream and you're looking back saying, I fucking said no to something that I shouldn't have said no to. So that's where the seven of swords energy is. Some of you feel like it's a hidden dishonor that somebody, you're realizing that somebody embellished something that they weren't really being honest with regards to the positive and the negative, but that's where the dream being sold to you aspect was, because why didn't you look for the shadow? You were offered something, but you did not look for the negatives, the, the cons. You, you allowed the, the dream to be fed to you. Because essentially this opportunity that was missed presented the pros and the cons. And the opportunity, which was a, a, a dream, Okay, what made it seem so dreamlike was that it didn't have any cons. So some of you picked the opportunity that didn't have any cons associated with it only to realize that it was presented that way to you on purpose to get you to more probability of you buying into it, staying, keeping it, doing whatever. That's a tough one. Some of you are conflicted about going back. So for some of you that that occurred, where you're at now is struggling to go back to this opportunity. Some of you, it's a walk of shame to go back to that employer and ask for that opportunity again, to go back to that recruiter and say, look, I'm still here. I'm not actually moving. Is there any way? Blah, blah, blah. Some of you are going back. It could be even a partner communicating to somebody. It's, it's, it's going back to the missed opportunity. It's the walk of shame, or at least that's how this person feels, which is why it's an injustice because this, this person, yeah. And, and you need to be mindful, Taurus, if this is you, you cannot blame this person for why you miss this opportunity because your instincts, okay. If you were listening to all the parts of yourself, balancing your head and your heart, okay. With the, that decision you would have seen the cons, whether they were presented to you or not. You did not look for them. You did not want to see them. 
So don't blame anybody. You learned a very, very valuable lesson here, Taurus. Many of you learned a very, very valuable lesson. A very painful one, though. Very painful one. These are the keys that speaks of what is most important. Some of you realized and learned what is most important. And essentially, that's the last two cards, the Magician and the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles, in my opinion, is the best card in the deck. Over all the major arcana, in, for me, all I want to see is the Ten of Pentacles. <laughs> that's all I care about. <laughs> Okay, that stability, that legacy, that birthright, ah, 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 that spiritual royalty, ah, 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 right? Yeah, some of you are realizing what's most important and are moving forward to what's most important, but feeling like you might have lost an opportunity because of a decision you made in the past. I want you to know, guys, that decision was in order to learn a very valuable lesson that will equip you for exactly where you're going. God knew you were not, God knew you were going to miss this opportunity, okay? God knew that you would feel like it was an injustice. God knew you would learn very valuable lessons about walking away from this low vibrational shit. Learn very valuable lessons about communicating your truths and being passionate about moving forward. Okay, learning what the Seven of Swords energy is, not just how it's done to you, but how you do it to other people, to yourself. Because some of you cheated yourself out of an opportunity. Okay. Yeah, yeah, God knew. God knew that you were going to make that decision. Or, Taurus, God knew that this other person was going to make this decision. And you might be wondering why God would support such a thing is because these lessons have to get learned. That's what karma is about. It's not about getting back and shit like that. It's about understanding the lessons of life and how shit works. <laughs> That's why we reincarnate here so many times, because it's never ending. Anyway. Ooh, Clara showed up. Haven't seen her in a while. Yes, shout out to my high priest, high priestesses out there, my fellow tarot readers. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, your support is appreciated. Especially all the readers. Your support is appreciated. Thank you. Anyways, there's Clara. Five of Cups, that speaks of regret. Some of you are regretting the decisions that you've made. And I think the only reason why you're regretting them is because you haven't pursued the opportunities you thought were once missed. Because a lot of you are going to go back, do this walk of shame, and realize what is for you is always for you. There's no such thing as missed opportunities. The divine knows exactly what you're going to do and not do. <laughs> they might be hoping different or whatever, but they have an idea. You know? So it's like... Beautiful lesson. Listen, it doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, you get down to the, the magician and the fucking Ten of Pentacles, so who cares? Divine guidance. This isn't a church. This is a room of somebody's home. This is where this is where we create church in our home. This is, speaks of victory, divine guidance, support, our spirituality, where it leads us, and how our spirituality and connection with the divine brings us in. Victory. And... Justice. Clara. Clara, did your man come save you yet? <laughs> For those that remember the story of Clara. All right. And then let's clarify with the... Um, the fairy godmother. Oracle. I don't know. I was just at indigo and everybody's like oh, are you shopping for other people i'm like no <laughs> buy what adult what what i don't get into that shit it's not that i don't celebrate christmas it's just i don't have like that kind of family set up <laughs> you know my mom loves it so i'll go and see her visit her i'll go get my little sister give her i buy her christmas gifts but that's it merry christmas guys Happy New Year, guys. Happy 2020, guys. You made it. Time for the real show to begin. Companionship. Wow. Somebody has made somebody feels like they made the wrong decision with regards to love. Some some of you feel like you made the wrong decision with regards to love and that you missed an opportunity with somebody. 
Some of you feel you missed an opportunity with the person that you're with and are trying to convince this person to give you another shot or vice versa, Taurus. Somebody could be trying to convince you to give you to give them another shot. Okay? Because they don't want to miss the opportunity that they're now understanding is in front of them. For others, this is a decision, um, a missed opportunity about a decision that was made in the past. Self-worth. This is what this whole lesson is about. For, for this person who's not going the good enough way, not going a very not going about conflict in a very good way. Okay, it's a very low vibrational way about going about conflict. There's this person isn't trying to this person will try to win at all costs. Okay. And essentially what they're trying to win is their way. It doesn't matter what this person wants to walk away and go do. This person just cares about their own intent. But this self-worth, this person's learning it. This person is learning self-worth. Okay. The person walking away, the person, the person still vibrating low and, and involved in the conflict, the self-worth, the Knight of Pentacles about moving forward, investing in the future, which is the Ten of Pentacles. That requires self-worth to manifest, okay? Bring your manifestations in, having faith surrounding your manifestations and your connection with God as above, so below, right? That requires self-worth, okay? And then lastly, destiny. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Sometimes I still get like, I'm like, that's my name. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I used to hate my name as a kid because it just was so weird. It was not not weird, but nobody else had a name like that. So I used to hate the attention that it would give me. I never liked attention at all. I know I did. And then I hit an age like seven where it was like I didn't want any attention. I think it was because I was gaining a lot of weight. Anyways, guys, destiny. This is fate and destined. A lot of you are going to realize opportunities that you thought were missed opportunities weren't. They were opportunities you weren't ready for but they were always things that were destined and fated for you to embark in. So there is no such thing as missed opportunities. You either weren't ready for them or they were never for you. Fickleness and wish. This speaks to me about surrendering. Fickle, fickleness and wish. This is about this manifestation coming in the way you think it's supposed to. It's being fickle about your wish, where it's not a wish fulfillment unless it comes in a certain way. The divine doesn't play into these narcissistic games. Okay, it's not McDonald's. Can I have it well done with extra lettuce? And no, okay, <laughs> you're going to get what is necessary for your health on that burger. Like, it's that kind of energy. Where did Chachi go? Anyway, let's wrap with a oracle, guys. My beautiful Tauruses, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on the reading. If it resonates, if not, it's cool. I'll see you next month. Guys, for these readings, okay? The Venom. For these readings, oh, we got two. We'll take the Venom though. Um, for these readings, guys, it's not even about signs. You guys need to come off the signs. Do you believe that time is an illusion and that you have every side in your chart or not? Because if you do, then it doesn't matter the month, okay, that the reading is titled. It doesn't matter the sign either. What should matter is, does the title resonate? Because <laughs> if it does, there's a good chance the reading will resonate too. Just saying. That's just my approach to it. I don't have any method or madness. It's just like, oh, that. So what? The title's supposed to resonate with me and I'm not supposed to read it because it's Taurus? And I have Taurus like long, long down on the bottom of my chart. Like what? What? No. I take what's for me, eh? <laughs> Some of you guys are just shaking your head at me like, bitch. <laughs> Some of you guys have been with me for a really long time. I can feel your energies. You guys just, you guys curse me out and yell at me through your computer screens and shit. <laughs> I love you guys though. All right. Venom. The poison, the curse, and the toxin. Much to our dismay, the venom is always lurking in the shadows in one form or another. 
its toxic presence may be found in our relationships, thought, speech, or environment. Thankfully, the cycle of purification and detoxification comes so naturally that it is built into our every exhale. We breathe out carbon dioxide and the plants return it to us as oxygen. Archetypal venom is rarely remedied as easily, however, and it can come in potent forms and quantities that are deeply damaging to us and to the world. When the venom card appears, there is a harmful substance in your psychic realm. that must be identified. Perhaps your words have a sting of poison about them. Perhaps a relationship is slowly draining your reserves. Acknowledgement is the first step. Change is the second. The remedy will reveal itself in time, and it is, and with it, forgiveness. When light, self-realization through suffering, and when dark, unwillingness to find a solution or forgive. Go deeper. A Poison Tree by William Blake. When you harm another, you harm yourself. Keep in mind this goes for our earth as well with cosmic, cosmic consequences. The spreading of the venom is like a chain reaction. When we strike others, it is likely we have ourselves been struck. Break the cycle. Break the cycle, absolutely. Anyways, guys, that's your spread. I love you guys. Happy New Year, all right? Like, share, subscribe. For those that are interested in the Patreon, um, which is where I will put any additional content. So daily, weekly readings are only offered exclusively through Patreon for members only. So check it out if you'd wish. Otherwise, I will see you next month. And until then, continue to let your inner angels live. Mwah! Ciao.